Do you support the implementations of this fine? Remember Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Metiangi and his ICT counterpart, uh, John Mosheru, have formed a task force to come up with the rules of uh, on uh, paying instant fines for traffic offences and start with the hashtag uh, KTN News Centre. So much of your feedback. Now, what I'd like us to do this morning, I'd like us to check our Super Bowl this morning and uh, talk about... Um, the instant uh, traffic fines but let's uh, we'll start first with the chronology of the events that so us uh, be here where we are today when it comes to the instant traffic fines now in 2016 the 23rd of the month of uh, september new traffic rules were gazetted now this is after uh, the national transport and safety authority came up with these rules and presented them uh, to the transport cabinet secretary that is uh, um, mr transport cabinet secretary that is masharia and uh, of course after he was given this uh, tra new traffic rules by the NTSA, he gazetted them on the 20 on the 23rd of October 2016. Now, come the 17th of uh, uh, 20, 17th of, of uh, November 2016, a group of uh, a group of people moved to the High Court to have the High Court suspend the rules. And in that month, it is that. Um, Justice Rosalind Aburili ordered that the rules be blocked uh, temporarily and meaning motorists, it, mean, it meant that motorists would be arrested and their vehicles uh, towed uh, to the police station. That was on the, uh, on, uh, the year 2016 and the year 2018. 11th of September 2018, the court reinstated the rules. Now, Justice John Mativo said that these rules have to be implemented. This didn't go well with uh, so many um, uh, stakeholders within the transport sector. And the reason uh, given by Justice Mativo, it is that Justice Mativo said the traffic or minor offences rules necessitated uh, by the need to curb corruption in, in traffic and departments of the police service and speed up cases and also uh, bring sanity on the roads. Just remember that the case was filed by the Kenya National Union of Cooperatives Employees. They went to the court in 2016 to have the rules by NTSA suspended. Again, they went back to court this year. The, the, the case continued this year and of course Justice Mativo said that uh, the rules have to be implemented. Now on the 12th, that is yesterday, the 12th of this month, 2018, the rules, uh, the Interior Cabinet Secretary, Dr. Fred Matiangi, said that these rules will be implemented in the month of November. Uh, that is, of course, um, a decision that he said will be made. Um, this is after he formed... Uh, the task force that will come up with how the payments will be done. So on KTN News Center this morning, this is a discussion I want us to have with three gentlemen in our studio, but two are in our studio here in Mombasa Road. One is in our city center studio. So Dixon Bugwa, the chairperson of the Matatu Welfare Association, will be joining us from our city center studios. <coughs> but in a studio this morning, we have uh, Muthomin Thiankul, is an advocate, of course, seated <laughs> to my right, immediate right. Right. And uh, joining him also is uh, Peter Murima, who is uh, the chairperson of the Association of Kenya Motorists. So this is a discussion we want to have this morning. And of course, continue engaging us on a social media platform at KTN News, my Twitter handle at Zeta Brenda, and of course, the hashtag KTN News Center. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. We want to have this discussion, instant traffic fines. And... Uh, for us to have this discussion, I'd like us first to begin the conversation uh, with Dixon Bogwa, who is the chairperson of the Metatu Welfare Association, joining us from our city center uh, studio. And uh, we shall be crossing over to Dixon Bogwa later on. Uh, but uh, of course, you are the chairperson yes. of the Association of Motorists. Yes. Do you support these rules, the traffic rules? Yes, we support them 101% uh, because they are good. Actually, we have participated. We did participate in uh, uh, the drafting of the same mm -hmm. through the National Council on Administration of Justice, a special work group which uh, had uh, drafted uh, the original uh, rules mm -hmm. in the first place. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you support them? Yeah, we support them uh, because uh, they are good. 
Mm -hmm. One is because they are going to ride uh, the corruption in a big way. Actually, they are going to stop corruption mm -hmm. because they are giving us an option. They are giving motorists an option of easy payment mm -hmm. of fines. Right now, what is easy mm -hmm. is to pay a bribe. Mm -hmm. But once we have easy fines, you'd uh, prefer paying fines. So you say to curb corruption, but so many Kenyans, even on social media, are saying that they are a bit skeptical about these traffic rules because sort of it will, sort of cre it will enhance corruption. Because how sure are we that the money you're paying the traffic police officer will reach where it's supposed to go? Uh, the arrangement is that uh, when these were enacted, uh, the police officer is just uh, an enforcer on the roadside. And he has a special gadget. The special gadget is able to read uh, the driving license mm -hmm. and also the identification print of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So now uh, the offense which you have committed is listed, mm -hmm. very well listed clearly mm -hmm. on a schedule, the first schedule. Uh, so it is very well listed. So you know uh, how much each offense costs. Mm -hmm. And then you pay instantly. Mm -hmm. And the good thing is that uh, when you pay, it shows on little time mm -hmm. at the judiciary portal mm -hmm. and uh, uh, at the police and the NTSA offices mm -hmm. because that is a, a judicial process. Even if the police person is doing it by the roadside, it is still remains a judicial process. Mm -hmm. But you know there is the instant where you feel that you have been accused unfairly. Mm -hmm. You are given the option of uh, a notice to attend court, okay. uh, which uh, within seven days you are supposed to present yourself in court mm -hmm. and then uh, argue out your case. Okay. Yes. And Mr. Theonkolu, it is that now this will make the police officer, the traffic police officer, to become the accuser, the prosecutor, and the judge. And that is not entirely true. Uh, but I think for me as a lawyer, my interest in these rules is uh, their structural soundness. And as a person who has studied uh, the Kenyan legal system for a long time, I can tell without any fear of contradiction that uh, the fines are fundamentally flawed mm -hmm. and they will not achieve the intended purpose. Uh, we're seeing this with all the respect to the multiple legal and other mites that were used. Why do we see this? Uh, the problem in our roads is not the police officer. And the problem is not even corruption. Corruption is just a natural consequence mm -hmm. of the sort of legal system we have, uh, which is characterized by inefficiency, by delays, uh, by abuse and harassment and whatnot. And mm -hmm. this can be said not just of traffic laws, but 99.99% of mm -hmm. our laws in this country because of the colonial legacy, you find that whenever we enact rules and laws, uh, we always envision them as a tool for harassing and bossing people around and putting them in. The first thing you notice about these rules, although they are called instant fines, mm -hmm. there is actually nothing instant about them. Mm -hmm. I would have imagined if these were instant fines, then you will not, as the judgment says, be required to go and uh, you know, uh, pay at the judiciary and whatnot. What I would have expected is an arrangement of the sort he's alluding to where there is a publicly dedicated pay bill number, by way of example, uh, where once you're caught and you've shown the schedule, uh, then uh, you pay your fine and you drive on. No questions asked further if, if you want that. And of course, the, the, the system becomes judicial if only you deny. Number two, when you study the penalties themselves, they are too heavy uh, to meet the objective of instant fines. You see, the idea is uh, when you're designing uh, instant fines, there, are t there is a certain balance you ought to be uh, striving to achieve. One, the fines ought not to be so low as to fail to deter people from breaking traffic rules. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they ought not to be so high as to create an incentive for the offender and the police officer on the ground to negotiate uh, a corrupt deal outside now of the framework of the rules. Mm -hmm. When you check those rules, the fines range generally from uh, 
500 shillings yeah. to 10,000 shillings. And the, the question is, in our type of economy, given uh, the per capita incomes and whatnot, how many people uh, how many people would rather give a police officer, say, 200 shillings, rather than pay the instant fine mm -hmm. of 10,000 shillings or 5,000 shillings? So that for me, to the extent that some of these fines are so high, mm -hmm. then uh, you create a natural incentive on the offenders and the police officers on the ground to have extra legal arrangements, which okay. we call corruption uh, yeah. in this case, okay. to resolve the matter outside of the intended instant fines. The, another fundamental flaw with these rules is uh, you find they say the police officer would arrest you um, and if you pay, uh, if you, want, you don't want to go to, to court or to be put in the cells, then uh, they have to bond you or give you bail and whatnot. We are still obsessed with the old colonial way that people must be arrested, granted bail and whatnot which is not the whole idea of instant fining. I, I, and then it goes even further to say something completely ridiculous, that the bail, if the police officer is to release you on bail, then the bail amount shall be equivalent of the statutory maximum, yeah. which is prescribed. So if the penalty, if I were to go to court, the mm -hmm. penalty would be, by way of example, 3,000 shillings, then it means the police officer can only release me upon depositing cash bill of 3,000 yeah, shillings. And you, know, and you know, that is what I was, I was asking. Yeah. I mean, if, if the fine ranges from 500 to 10,000 shillings, mm -hmm. and that's what I was asking you, it will actually encourage corruption because I'm thinking my fine is only 500 shillings. Why can't I negotiate with a police officer like, you know, Afisa Chukwa Tui Miambili and let me go because my offense is, is really minor. Uh, uh, 500 shillings. Uh, with all uh, 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 considerations. It's not much, uh, 10,000 shillings, uh, because it depends on, uh, fine, uh, on uh, fine margins. Say, for example, on severity of the offense. If it is obstruction, mm -hmm. all other offenses which are a little bit major, that's when you are given 10,000 shillings. But if you look at the fines we uh, find at our courts, they are far much higher. Mm -hmm. We get 30,000, even 40, even 50,000. But so why... You, okay, just finish. Yeah, but why these ones were arrested mm -hmm. and actually lowered? These mm -hmm. fine margins have been lowered. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were factored when they were being uh, drafted. Uh, there are those fines that are mostly repeated or they are most common that have been captured. Mm -hmm. So that uh, now uh, we have a margin, a clear margin, and then a low margin, that is very low. Actually, motorists are talking about 5,000 fines, 3,000 so fines. are you supporting, as a motorist association, are you supporting this minor traffic rules because it gives you a way, it, it's an alternative of paying a cheaper fine and like when you take into the court? You see, it is not cheap fines at the end of the day because the police person, when he arrests you, he takes you literally to the police station. Mm -hmm. But for this case, he is, going, you are go he is going to fine you by the roadside, which means that he is going to fine more motorists mm -hmm. and also catch you several times. Mm -hmm. Unlike now when, when he catches only one. Mm -hmm. So repeated off offenders are also being punished because we are losing demerit points. Mm -hmm. So every time you are caught, and, and at this time you'll be caught every time. Actually, I can say you'll be caught every time you are uh, uh, doing an offense. Mm -hmm. So uh, instant fines, uh, because of their speed, they are going to catch uh, across, uh, to be spread across the board, mm -hmm. and actually they are going to raise revenue, because most motorists would rather pay a fine mm -hmm. than a bribe, because a fine at the end of the day will go to the exchequer, mm -hmm. and it can come back in improved services by the okay. government. Okay. Yeah, so we are supporting them, uh, because they, are, they will make the life of uh, motorists easy, but not easy in terms of offend, mm -hmm. uh, uh, doing offenses, mm -hmm. because you see, once you are caught, once you are caught uh, doing an offence, uh, you are registered. Even if it's a warning, a warning will be registered this mm -hmm. time. Okay. So you are given a warning by the police officer. He tells mm -hmm. you you should not be doing this, or a notify uh, to go and rectify a certain fault. Mm -hmm. Because you see, it's capturing the minor offences. Okay. Major offences, you still be uh, arrested, like okay. obstruction, uh, driving without uh, an insurance cover, 
and uh, or causing deaths and other uh, offenses, you still be arrested for mm -hmm. such. But for minor offenses, uh, you will no longer be arrested, but you'll be issued with a notice to attend court, which is quite convenient mm -hmm. within seven days. We have instances where uh, you are going to uh, up country for a funeral or a wedding, and then you are caught, you are arrested, detained by the roadside for a very long time, instead of being fined or issued with a notice uh, to attend court. This one is eliminating the uh, need for a cash, uh, cash okay. bill. Okay. So uh, in this uh, new arrangement, you will not be required actually uh, for the minor offenses to be paying. And the good thing is that uh, you'll go to, uh, to a court of your choice, and like now, when if you committed an offense in Kitare and you had gone for a funeral there, you'll be required again next to week back to, to go back to Kitare. So okay. now uh, there is an arrangement that's coming up where you are asked even the court to attend because all the courts are uh, judicial, uh, okay. judicial process okay. anywhere, anyway. Okay. So that is who, uh, the advantages of uh, the new instant fines. And they have been formulated, many doesn't know, by a multi agency mm -hmm. of uh, government and non governmental bodies. Okay. That is the police, to comprise the police, the judiciary, uh, that is uh, the office of uh, director of public prosecutions, uh, the attorney general, uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Motorist Association of Kenya. Those are the ones, uh, plus others, who came up with those uh, uh with that with that and it was a work that was done actually for two years okay yes. so i'd like us to cross over right now to our city center studio and uh, talk to dixon bugwa who is the chairperson of the matatu welfare association and mr dixon uh, mr bugwa thank you so much for joining us here on kt news center and in 2016 mr bugwa when uh, the ntsa came up with these rules and gave um, uh, james masharia transport cabinet secretary who gazetted them you are in support do you still support the rules yeah indeed um <clears throat> I do support, or we do support this, uh, the rules of use and fines ticketing. And I can as well if you shed some light on that. In 2006, we had really drafted um, a, a five page of the, of the Eastern fine uh, ticketing system with this, so many moderate fines, depending on what kind of offense one has committed. And uh, the system that we had really put in place, although it was shut down by by the commission of police at that time and um, some uh, you know state council in ag's office but um we had really crafted up a very well structured kind of mode of paying fine instant fine ticketing um, one thing that is very clear the instant fine um, uh, uh, pay mode of payment system should really be structured in such a manner that one is given booked and you know the, the kind of the offense you have really committed at the face of the cheat is your details then at the back of uh, the that cheese that's overleaf it is the nature of the offense that you have committed and the amount of fine and um we had struck in, in a manner such that you would pay within seven seven days now within seven days you are supposed to pay that within in any court of law in the country, uh, any revenue offices in the, in, in the government setup, and, um, or KRA for that matter, so that at least you are able now to pay at your nearest uh, revenue collection offices and not at this place where you committed that offense. Now, in this one, that is, uh, came out as a ruling from the, um, from the High Court. Um, it doesn't have those structures. And we know very well our um, traffic police officers, law enforcers. We know what kind of people we have. Seventy percent of them really have been very dishonest and are corrupt and have adapted all manner of really intimidating, harassing motorists so that their motorists are able to pay something to, to them. Whether uh, imagined offenses or real offenses, it all amounts to the same, that you are coerced, you are intimidated is to us a level that you pay something to them really uh, to get off the hook. Otherwise, they waste a lot of your time taking you to the police stations uh, whereby you are charged 
and uh, it depends on the arresting officer sometimes who put you behind the counter for some hours and uh, also those who don't want to, who, who have been resistant are uh, adapt the integrity uh, issues the integrity level of their arguing and what have you and um, are subject to be taken to the court you spend the whole day in court in fact interfering with your day to day routine in, in a manner such as that uh, it becomes unproductive. So we are happy for this uh, instant fine uh, ticketing system that has come up, but they need to go and niche further, uh, uh, to the next level, really. What are the structures? Where will these fines be paid? Because um, we had the same instant fine tickets, ticket system in 1978, 79, 80 up to 81. Then it was scrapped because of the police, uh, because of the in integrity matters, dishonest and what have you. So it was discontinued, then we came back to the notice to attend court. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Mbugwa, for that explanation. And before we continue with this conversation, Ms. Mbugwa, let's just have a look at some, some of the fines that um, will be imposed on any traffic offender. There are several, but we've just uh, had a few for you. And the first one is that unqualified drivers will have to pay a fine of actually 5,000 shillings. Now, under the new rules, and qualified drivers, of, of course, they'll be slapped with 5,000 shillings. And now that one includes mechanics, uh, car, uh, mechanics and uh, some of the car wash and parking attenders who frequently get behind uh, the wheels even when they're not qualified to drive. Also, owners of public service vehicles who hire such drivers and conductors who pay twice the amount. So if any uh, public service vehicle owner and uh, conductors who are not qualified drivers and are found driving, now they will pay twice that amount. Now, clearly that is 10,000 shillings. Now, the other one is speeding. Now, when motorists exceed the speed limit, we'll, uh, they'll be fined um, uh, 5,000, 500 to 10,000 shillings. Now, according to the rules, motorists exceed the speed limits by between 6 and 10 kilometers per hour are fined 500,000 shillings. Now, exceeding the speed limit by between 11 and uh, uh, 15 kilometers per hour, that attracts about 3,000 shillings fine and uh, 10,000 shillings between 16 uh, kilometers per hour and 20 kilometers per hour. Now, the only difference, we, there's, however, there's another difference. It is that motorists exceeding the speed limit set for their vehicles uh, by between one and five kilometers per hour will receive a warning. So they will not pay any sort of fine. All right. Now, matatus operating without speed governors attract a fine of 10,000 shillings. So anyone who's operating a matatu that doesn't have a speed governor will have to uh, pay uh, 10,000 shillings. And if you board a matatu and you fail to uh, uh, use a safety belt, you will have to um, pay 500,000 shillings. And lastly, of course, 1,000 shillings fine will be on the people who leave a part of their body outside a moving vehicle. So any matatu, because we've seen several matatus, you know, trying to tie uh, things on top of the body of the car. So they will pay a fine of 1,000 shillings. And of course, motorcyclists and passengers who are not using any sort of uh, safety um, uh, gears will have to be fined 1,000 shillings. So those are just some of the penalties that uh, any traffic offender will have to pay when found guilty. Gentlemen, you've had all that. Yes. Is it, are we sort of trying to, will it bring a bit of some sanity within, within our Kenyan roots? Of course, Mr. Thiankolu, you, you sort of laid um, a bit of, you are a bit as, as, um, not so um, confident with all this. It's not just not being confident. I'm absolutely sure, and I'm speaking from a structural point of view. Uh, we should agree the general idea of instant fines is a very good idea. It is long overdue. should have been done a long time ago. On the facts, on the design of these rules, have we gotten it right? Absolutely not. Why haven't you got any it? Because, like I said, one, they call it instant fines, but when you check it, even for those who want to pay the instant fine, mm -hmm. it is still a judicial process. Mm -hmm. You have to sign on the second schedule a, 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 a confession or an admission or a plea of guilty, send the money either by registered post and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's a long, tedious process, mm -hmm. and meanwhile, 
you have to be granted bail or board at the police station, mm -hmm. which must be equivalent to the fine. My understanding, and how I think it works in the more serious countries, is that uh, you have two options the judicial or the non-judicial option, so mm -hmm. that if, if I'm willing to pay the penalty, I simply go to a portal or to a pay bill number or to a bank uh, in this day of technology, pay, get off. Mm -hmm. Matter doesn't get a conviction recorded anywhere, mm -hmm. no involvement of the judiciary. If I deny the offense, of course, then uh, we start talking about bail, arraignment in court and mm -hmm. whatnot, the legal process. Mm -hmm. Although we are calling these rules instant fine rules in their design, they are not actually instant fine mm -hmm. rules. And like I said, you know, for me, my concern here is uh, when we talk of a structure like this building, mm -hmm. in Kenya, we love to look at the aesthetics of the building uh, and how well the finishings are done and whatnot without looking at the structure. Mm -hmm. My concern is not with the idea whether we should have const uh, instant fines because I think even a fool would agree that is the way to go. Mm -hmm. My concern is when I examine uh, the rules uh, with my lens now as a, as a legal practitioner, as someone who has lived in this country for some time, I know for sure that the system will not work, mm -hmm. it will not achieve the intended goals mm -hmm. because the structure is defective. Okay, uh, do you agree with Mr. Thionkoli that the system will not work? Uh, we will be watching mm -hmm. because as per uh, the agreement of the instant fines mm -hmm. is that they will be meted. And that's why we are calling them minor offenses. Mm -hmm. They will be meted by the roadside. So uh, the police will be just having some gadget mm -hmm. and then the pay bill will apply mm -hmm. or a number. We know uh, that NTSA have got a special portal mm -hmm. known as e-citizen. The government can use that because the money will add up with the exchequer anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, the best thing about uh, the instant fines is that, uh, as we said, they'll eliminate the arrests. They will, uh, because now you'll be issued, uh, when you feel that uh, the accusation is not right, you'll be issued instantly with a notice to attend court, mm -hmm. unlike the case now where you are required to pay uh, cash bail. Mm -hmm. And then if uh, the, the enforcer, that is the police officer, does not adhere to those regulations, then we'll have to, we'll have to protest. But as we speak, mm -hmm. we know that uh, if the rules are mm -hmm. applied as uh, they have been drafted or they have been gazetted, mm -hmm. uh, it will work. Because you see, uh, the persons who did this are experts. We had representation from the Royal Society of Kenya, mm -hmm. which looked and actually uh, critically critiqued the, uh, the formulation okay. on every stage. Okay. So uh, uh, the process was involved all the experts mm -hmm. uh, that were needed when it was not drafted. Many think that it is uh, NTSC who came up with these uh, uh, regulations alone. Mm -hmm. No, it was uh, uh, police, po police representation and all other bodies okay. under the abbreviation of the National Council or uh, an administration. Okay. So, okay. Yes. Mr. Mbukwa, let me bring you into this conversation. And it is 10,000 shillings fine um, for Matatu operators who don't have speed governors. And, uh, of course, you, you had the breakdown that I gave, exceeding the limits between 15 and 11 and 15 uh, kilometers attracts 3,000 and uh, between 3,000 and 10,000 and between uh, actually 3,000 and 10,000 is between 16 and 20 kilometers per hour. But my question is this, how will the police officers know that a Matatu driver has exceeded the speed limit? Because we know also that some of Matatu operators also interfere with the speed governors. Yeah, yeah. The thing here is, um, it's very easy to know when the matter drivers exceeded the speed limit because um, currently most of the vehicles, PSV vehicles, is mandatory that they have speed governors. It cannot pass the tests. It cannot pass the inspection at Likoni and many other inspection centers uh, throughout the country 
without a working speed governor. So the, the officer, arresting officer, or those keeping surveillance on the roads must be equipped with speed governor uh, guns so that they are able now to detect that matatu or that personal vehicle has ex exceeded the uh, allowed speed by so many, uh, what called the dig the digital, whatever it is, that is beyond the allowed speed, which is eight in the commercial vehicles and matatu uh, vehicles, is eight. For personal vehicles, I believe it goes up to 100 or 110. Now, having said that, I, it is a good idea that we have um, uh, what you call uh, the MPESA uh, uh, what contact, so that at least those, of, those who are committing the MPESA are able now to MPESA go to that number, so that at least the police officer will be able to know or be shown, yes, it has gone through and this amount has been paid. And then, of course, um, the other issue that is very difficult here for us um, to really engage is who supervises that police officer, that law enforcer that is doing the right thing, is in, not involved in the corrupt practices because they are... Um, supervisor in themselves. They are bosses when they are on the road on themselves. It's between the law enforcer and the driver. And um, this is where now the negotiations do take place. And uh, we believe those who are going to be deployed with this system will be people of high integrity and not um, the regular police that we normally have. Otherwise, we will not be solving anything um, in, in terms of the corruption and matters to do integrity. Um, the other thing, of course, now is um, town services. We know town services, there's uh, so many, there's jam, there's 50 kilometer per hour limits and all that, and most of the law enforcers who are in town, those are the worst people we can, we can never have in terms of corruption and what have you. So we need really to put in a structure, proper structure, so that at least um, we were able to make this move. It's a good move, and it's going to save people a lot of man hours, a lot of um, uh, what you call the intimidation, a lot of um, the harassment that we keep on going on our roads day to day in. So we, sh we need to support that. Now, let me also comment, when you go to court, um, I listened to, the, to my friend lawyer who is with you there, that um, is preferring rather retain the, the old system going to court. But uh, going to court in itself, you are not sure how much you are going to be fined. It could be maximum, sometimes it could exceed. We have been having instant cases whereby the statute says up to 10,000. And then you have certain magistrates going even to 20, 30, uh, 40,000. And um, <clears throat> you know now petitioning on that is a long process. That's why people sometimes do not uh, don't um, really petition. So instant fine ticks is, a, is a, a move that will save us time and also um, <clears throat> save um, the law enforcer the process of going to police station, charging, and then taking people to court. Yeah. Um, Mr. Nfiankolo, let me just bring you into this conversation. You've had Mr. Mbugwa just, you know, try, sort of trying to challenge your thoughts on what you had said in terms of the court process. Because for the Matatu Welfare Association and also for the Motorist uh, Association, it is that for them it will actually reduce the number of corruption on our roads and in terms of the tedious court processes. And that is the same argument that Justice Mativo gave except that it's a very simplistic argument that uh, does not appreciate the drivers of corruption. Uh, people engage in corruption not because they have a genetic predisposition to be corrupt, not because they have a cultural predisposition to be corrupt, but because of the cost and benefits mm -hmm. that a particular situation presents you with. Let's say I'm going to an important meeting along Vika Road, and I've been stopped by a police officer. I'm a rational person. That's a meeting in which I hope to close a deal, say worth five million shillings. And then uh, this police officer wants to detain me uh, because I exceeded the speed limit, uh, and the fine is 10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the instant fine. 
uh, but he could take a bribe of 1,000 shillings and I go. Mm -hmm. Given the scenario I've told you, if you're a rational, sane person, forget all the moralizing about corruption. There is nothing moral about corruption. I did, when I read that judgment by Matifo, one of the things that really caught my eye mm -hmm. is a study that the Anti-Corruption Commission was an interested party to that case had done, showing that um, they investigated uh, MPES accounts of 28 police officers uh, for a period of one year, and they found that the monies they believed or suspected uh, were proceeds of corruption mm -hmm. in the region of 18 million shillings had passed in these 28 accounts. Mm -hmm. I tried to cascade this to if 12 months these 28 police officers had collected 18 million shillings in bribes, how much had each of them collected uh, per month? Uh, you just divide by 28, then divide by 12. And I noted that uh, on average per month, each of them had collected around 55,000 shillings. Now, if a police officer collects around 55,000 shillings uh, per month in uh, these petty bribes, uh, that makes it impossible to enforce a uh, to a traffic code, then it means on average, if we es maybe escalate it to 60, it means it's collecting on average 2,000 shillings mm -hmm. per day. Okay. Uh, and here you have with an offense a, a regime of instant fines that says you pay 10,000 mm -hmm. a bill. If a police officer is collecting on average 2,000 shillings per day, mm -hmm. it tells you from the many cars he's stopping and whatnot, maybe the most he's collecting is 50 shillings, 100 shillings mm -hmm. here, uh, 500 shillings there. So I would have expected even that study actually to inform uh, the, 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 the amount set out in this, in this system. And like I said, my problem is not with the idea. You, I, I, okay. I have no problem with the idea of instant fines. Mm -hmm. But I must tell you, as a, as, as, as a, as a legal practitioner, mm -hmm. I must tell you as a legal scholar, it doesn't mean we have necessarily gotten the details right merely because we agree on the, on the idea. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Mr. Thiankolu, who is an advocate, and uh, gentlemen, because of time, we'd have to bring this conversation to an end. We have been talking uh, to different representatives from the Matatu Welfare Association, uh, from our city centre studio, it was Mr. Dixon Bogwa, who is the chairperson of the Matatu Welfare Association, and of course, we had Peter Murima, who is also the chairperson of the Association of Motorists of Kenya, just talking about the uh, traffic minor offences rules 2016 that. Uh, Justice John Mativo said should be implemented. All right, now we need to take a short break, but just before I take the short break here on KTN News Center, it is that the latest information that we are receiving right now here on KTN News Center.